Hello and welcome everyone. Uh, I'm Anurag and in this session of full stack projects with Flutter, uh, we are going to be looking into using packages and assets. So by assets, I mean uh, bundling images and custom fonts. So before moving on to the session, let us recap of uh, what we have done in the previous session of Flutter. So we looked into something called states. Uh, we categorize the widgets in Flutter uh, depending on whether they change their appearance and behavior on state or not. So we have the stateless widget, which uh, do not depend on state. And we had the stateful widget, which depend on state. We define the UI of the app as a function of state. So whenever the state changes, the UI of the app will change. Next up, we looked at something called build context. And we had a little bit of intuition of what that build context means in terms of uh, in relationship with the widget trees and uh, Flutter code. So we use the builder widget or the widget factoring to get the appropriate context uh, depending on our requirement. So in case of widget refactoring, we break the widget tree into separate widgets. And in case of builder widgets, we define, uh, it creates a specialized uh, context, uh, which is under the current context. So. That being said, let's get to coding. So this is where we left off in the previous session. Uh, we have these three pages <coughs> in the bottom navigation bar. And we have this uh, in text. So for this session, uh, what we are uh, going to be doing is uh, we will uh, integrate a uh, logging functionality using Firebase. So, what I am supposed to, uh, what I have to do is we have this draw over here, right? So, I'm thinking of uh, being uh, an option for the user to log in or log out depending on whether the user has logged in or not. And along with, I want to display the email address of the user. So if the user uh, hasn't logged in, it would instead show as uh, a guest user, right? So let me go to the So I'm over the voice section over here. Let me change its child to something build draw items. So I save that. Load. So uh, this changes a lot of things. So this uh, including this build draw items is a lot of things. So let us see what build draw items is. It returns a widget, which is actually a column. In the column, we had a we have a draw header, <coughs> which uh, you know is self-explanatory. It functions as the header of a drawer. Uh, we give it a color of blue, and inside the draw header, we have a text which uh, displays as uh, the user as guest. Uh, next up in the column, we have a list style. So list style is a special type of widget uh, we have in Flutter. It has a leading, leading parameter in which we give it an icon, as you can see over here. And then we have a title, uh, which is a text widget. It has also something called on tap, which is very similar to uh, an on breast of a button. Uh, you can see we have a lot more um, parameters for the list style, but we are going to just use this three for now. So you can see this on tap, we use something called handle login intent. 
uh, which is defined over here. Uh, this uh, handle login intent does this uh, this single statement over here. So it uses something called a navigator. Now, what a navigator is uh, in Flutter, whenever uh, when you whenever you want to uh, navigate from a page from a different page. For example, in this case, we have the home page, and we want to navigate to the login page. So in that case, uh, we would use a navigator. So we use a navigator, and we give it a context. Uh, so, but what is this pop uh, thing over here? So uh, this pop uh, and push technology, as you can see from the comment code, comes from the fact that if you are using uh, building a material app in Flutter, it uses something called a navigation stack. Now, what is the navigation stack? You can kind of visualize it as a stack of pages. So suppose we, I had this uh, home page over here, and whenever I navigate to uh, a login page in our case, so that login page will be, will be pushed on top of that uh, home page in the navigation stack, so that this home page goes uh, to the uh, back and that login page comes to the front as the top of the navigation stack. Same case for popping. So if I want to go back from the uh, login page to the home page, I will pop that uh, login page off that uh, navigation stack. And this way, I can see, I would see the home page again. So for now, this uh, handle login intent, which is supposed to be invoked whenever we tap this list style, uh, does this navigator of context.pop. Let us see what, ha what happens when I tap this. So as you can see, popping uh, from the navigation stack closes that drawer. So you can kind of figure out that this drawer is handled as a separate page, which is pushed, pushed on top of this home page, right? But we, we want to, uh, after closing this drawer, navigate to the login page, right? So for that, let me uncomment this lines of code and use navigator of context or push. So this push uh, function takes the material page route. Again, self-explanatory. It is used for uh, the page routes uh, in a material app. It takes a builder and it gets a context and it returns the widget which we want to see as a separate page. So in this case, let me pass it a login widget. And let us import this. So it gets imported over here. OK, so save that. Reload. So after loading. And there we go, we navigate to the login page. We close the drawer and we navigate to the login page. So let me show you the layout of the login page. So it is a stateless widget. It has a scaffold, it has an app bar, it has a inside it has a title. Now the center title centers the title. Uh, so as you can see, this is a title when it is not centered. And this is the title where it is centered. So in cent uh, in border we have center widget. Inside we have a column. Uh, inside the column uh, we have a card which uh, you know represents the material card, family material card. Uh, it has a elevation which shows uh, the elevation as shadow. It has round corners, all that uh, stuff. And inside this card, we have a container. Now, the uh, height and width of the container is using something called a media query. Now, the term media query will be very familiar to those guys who have used a CSS uh, to make responsive UIs. So, this media query of context uh, gives us the various properties of the viewport. That if I say it in the terms of uh, uh, web pages, the viewport of 
the details of the report that our app is running on. So in this case, the media quality of context has a property called size, which gives us the size of the screen. Uh, so in this case, we take the uh, for the height of the container, we uh, take the si the height of the screen size, and then we uh, multiply 0 0.6 to get the 60% of the height. Same is the case for width. At the high width of the container is 80% of the width. So inside, uh, we give some padding, and then we have form. Now, um, as we are uh, implementing a loading uh, the logging functionality, our form consists of uh, email a text box and a password text box. So same is the case here. In the form, we have column, and inside that column, we have a text form field and uh, two text form fields rather and each of them have a couple of parameters that have been passed so first of first of all is the keyboard type now the keyboard type is a parameter which requests the system to provide the appropriate uh, keyboard so in this case for the email button uh, you can see that uh, i can easily get the address symbol, which is very, which is you know, used in all of the email addresses, and I can, as you can see, it has changed to, you know, uh, help me input my password quickly. Especially, uh, what, what I'm trying to say is that for different text fields, we have uh, specialized keyboards, so that is the thin keyboard type. Uh, in the equation, we give it some uh, outline uh, border. It, it has a border radius of circular uh, of 12.0 uh, points. And then we give it some level text. So as you can, can figure out, level text is uh, level, level text levels uh, the text form fields. So in this case, I have this level text as email, and it shows an email. Same is the case for password over here. Now, uh, the next thing I have is something called button bar. It is very similar to uh, row widget, but it is for buttons. Uh, inside, we have a flat button and a raised button. Now, I want to highlight the, that logging button uh, more than the forward password button. So, that is why I have used different number of buttons for each of the buttons. So we have a forward password button and a login button. Now, uh, as you can see, you have a little problem over here. It shows as uh, to show the console. As you can see, it gives us some errors because uh, what we are doing is uh, keyboard. Whenever the keyboard is invoked, the screen size that on which Flutter can show the contents is shrink. So Flutter cannot uh, show the rest of the content. So that is why it is overflowing and gives us this. Uh, so what we can do is make the content scrollable so that whenever the content shrinks, you can still scroll and see the rest of the content. For that, uh, go over here. Do it a parent of the column widget. Wrap it with widget, and we are going to use the single child scroll view widget. So it is a scroll view which has a single child. So let me reload. Something else. Okay, oh, uh, uh, it shouldn't be here. It should be instead of over here. Single child scroll view. Okay, 
So as you can see, this time the error is not being shown, but I can still scroll up and down to see the rest of the content. So being done that, let us move on. So after the uh, card widget, we have something called a. Uh, we I have added a flag button, which uh, gives the option for user to sign up instead. Uh, for the time being, it does nothing, but. Uh, we want to uh, change the change some things whenever the user tries to sign up. So first of all, we will change the login title to sign up. We will remove the forward password button because that wouldn't make sense. And then we will uh, change this over here to sign up again. And similarly, we will uh, change this text. For that, let us change the type of this stateful widget and give it a state variable. So it will be new is new user. So if it, it, is, it, it this is new user will be true if uh, user wants to start sign up or it will be false if the user wants to log in. Now I have mentioned in the previous um, session that the structure of the state class is very similar to a stateful, uh, stateless widget, except for some optional additions. Uh, we are going to be using uh, optional addition over here. One of the optional additions uh, we need to override from the super for uh, super class that is void state. So as the name suggests it uh, initializes the state. So in this case, inside, we need to give it the state variable initial value false. Now, it, uh, the, analyzer the analyzer states that we need to, uh, we, we must call super in this case, if using these functions. For that, we need to do this thing. Okay, being done that, let us go over here and you set state. And we press this button to change the state variable to its inverse. So whenever it is true, it will be false and vice versa. Auto load. Okay, I need to change a lot more things than that. So, first of all, making use of the term operator. Also, I don't want to show this button if is new user is true. So in this case, it will be displayed only when it is false. This fail button will be displayed only if uh, is new user is false. So that is why I have uh, written this if statement over here. Is new user. Sign up. What should we say? Uh, something like already. Save and format. No. As you can see, we have changed the login uh, page to a sign up page. Okay. Now, uh, 
to store the details of uh, the user uh, i have created a file named user.dart in the lib folder which you know st uh, stores the uh, id as a string which will be getting from the firebase uh, firebase api and the email of the user so before i continue i need to first set up a firebase project so that go on to console firebase and give it a new creating new project so for that uh, what should we name it uh, let us go with notify login app no. continue uh, we don't need analytics for now so disable that if you wish so it's creating a project uh don't take that much of time continue so in here uh, at fiber to app now uh, as we are developing a product it may require that you for you to build the uh, ios app too so for that you can uh, create simultan simultaneously create uh, android uh, Android plugin and iOS plugin uh, for the same app, but since we are uh, only developing on Android for now, let us go stick with Android. So it asks for something called Android package name. Now, where you will get that? Let me show you. Uh, so in your project, uh, this is the root. Uh, folder of your project so in root project uh, folder of your project go to the android folder the app folder then the source folder and the main folder and inside you will find something called uh, android manifest and xml file so open that so in the second in the second line you can see it says something of package equal to some your package name so this is the android I hope we didn't lose anyone. So, so uh, we were at uh, finding the Android app package name. So, this is where our Android app package name is uh, located. So, copy this, paste it over here. Uh, these are optional. You can give it an app name or not, your choice, and then list the app. So after that, it gives something called a uh, configuration file. So it is kind of like the Firebase configuration, Firebase config of JS. Uh, if you are building, uh, if you have had an experience with building Firebase apps on it, so download this file. So this. So next, it shows us uh, where to. Uh, place of file the downloaded file uh, in our project so let me open this copy this file and go to our app folder so 
this is our uh, root. Uh, this is our project folder. So where it needs to the run. So where it needs to go is uh, go to the node folder uh, and in the app folder. So it uh, so paste the file over here. So let me show you again. So in the app folder, we have an app folder inside. You paste this Google Services file. So after that, it has a couple more steps we need to do. So click on next. Then it uh, asks us to add some more lines to some of the files. So first of all, we need to go to the project level build and add this line. So copy this. So uh, now go to the project level build uh, So this is our root. So this is our root folder. Inside we have an Android folder, and inside that Android folder we have a build Gradle file. So open this file. Uh, let me go back to these instructions. So it says us to put this line in the dependencies section. So so here is the dependencies section of that build out Gradle file. Paste that line over here. Save. Next up, it uh, uh, need to go to the app level builder build file and paste this line. So for the app level build or griddle, you need to go to the Android folder, the app folder, and inside this app folder, we have another build or griddle file. The same place where you pasted the Google services dot JSON file before. So go here, and this is our build of Gradle file, the app level. In the last line, add this. So save that. So finally, we need to sync now. So for syncing the Gradle, we need to close this app. And Flutter run again. So this will build the real files uh, that we have just added. So while it does that, okay. So we need to do uh, one more thing. Cancel this. So uh, even if we uh, integrated the Firebase from the Firebase side, we need to integrate the Firebase from the Flutter side. For that, we need to uh, use packages. So for using packages, we need to use something called popspec.yum. Now. What is prospect here? It is a file that lists the dependencies data, that is data about the dependencies and some project properties of the app. So it uh, includes the name of our app, the version code, and uh, the Flutter version that it has been built on. And then uh, the prospect.yaml is located at the root of the project folder. So the same place where that Android folder, Android folder was in our project. Uh, we can add external libraries or packages. Uh, we need to define them on the dependencies section. We will see what that means uh, as we work with it. Uh, we can add assets, which in can include images and custom fonts. We need to add them on the assets section and the font section uh, in the prospect.yaml. And finally, for 
uh, facing that uh, dependencies that is the external libraries assets and the custom forms we need to run this command that is for the pocket so as we are uh, Indicating Firebase, so Flutter has plugins uh, that work with Firebase. So for uh, searching for Flutter packages or any dot packages, you need to go to pub.dev. It is uh, it hosts uh, the entire fl uh, dot and Flutter packages catalog. You can search over here. Uh, uh, on various packages, it has some favorite photo packages. It has some top packages, and inside. Okay, first of all, let us search for the Firebase authentication package. So let us search for that. Yeah. So as you can see, we have Firebase auth package. So let us see what it is. I was authoring, so it lists the US usage instructions. So we have done this test before already. So we added these lines, we added these lines, and added the plugin, uh, configuration files. And then we need to use a plugin uh, from the third side. For that, go to installing and it lists the instructions for adding them in a prospect.dm. So copy this. Go to prospect.yaml, which is first of all, let me close this build up model, which is located in the root folder root folder of our project. So here it is prospect.yaml. As you can see, it has uh, comments that uh, guide us how to use this uh, file. So for now, we need to go over dependencies and add the line we copied. So VS Code, if you're using VS Code, uh, after some time, it will automatically uh, pop get uh, Speak to our YAML, but uh, if you want to, as you can see, it is automatically using pubget. But let me pubget manually. As long it is, as long it, it is not showing anything of error, you're fine. So after we have included this package, let us now let us run. So while it is rebuilding the griddle and the packages, let me go back to our files project. As you can see, our app has been added over here. So first of all, uh, in case you didn't uh, actually want to download the JSON in the first place, you can go over to the project settings, and you can download it from here. So for uh, using authentication, we need to go to the authentication over here. And then we will set up a sign method and enable email password save this go to the users and let us add a user let us name it user notify to that this is the password and this user So as you can see, even though we added this user, we cannot see 
the password anymore so the security of the your users is ensured firebase works that way so it is still running riddle let me go for its settings okay so Okay, so there's no installing the app. So by this time, the files has been fully integrated, except that we need to first make use of the Firebase functions. So for that, I have created a auth file over here. So let me uncomment this. So it imports the Firebase auth package and it has a class named auth. Inside this auth, we have uh, a final variable uh, of Firebase authentication, which will contain a Firebase instance. Um, you can see I'm just doing something over here. So this is what is called in the uh, initializer list. So this statement will be executed before any statement in constructor is executed. So you can use this property to initialize your final variables. And with that, we have some helper functions of sign in, sign up, getting the current user, and sign up. Now uh, you can see I am using something called async, await, and futures. Now this is a very uh, separate topic of using asynchronous op operations in Dart. But for the time being, uh, let's, let's just say that by using this await keyword, we are making sure that this statement, after this statement, which is uh, written after this statement, will not be executed unless and until this uh function returns a result whether it be some data or whether it be some error so by uh, by using this await keyword uh, we await for this function to complete so for using this await keyword we make the function uh, async so that it signifies an asynchronous operation which is uh, what happens if you are working with a uh, web and for using async we use something called future. So future is something very similar to promises in JavaScript, uh, or so as I've been told. So future, uh, it is kind of like a box. Uh, until until this uh, function does not return anything, it remains closed. Whenever it returns something, it will give us uh, an object of Firebase user. So that is how future operates. Although it is very uh, expensive than that, so in sign in we have uh, sign in with email and password. Inside we give it an email and a password. And in case of sign up, we use create user with email and password. Uh, we get the current user using Firebase or the current user. In case of sign up, we use this function. Now let us make use of this auth class in our home page so first of all let me define a auth reference import this file is import it over here and use the constructor so what i am uh, so, uh, what you can see from this curly basis in the uh, in the parameters this is actually a uh, optional named parameter so uh, as you are using uh, widgets you can see that this constructor uh, 
so has i guess parameters so i have said a widget is nothing but a data class it has this constructor which we use over here so this is what uh, name parameters gives us so use the name in parameters like this uh, over like like uh, enclosing and curly braces so save that next step uh, for using this auth let me pass an auth object over here next up we want to check whenever we uh, load this home page whether uh, this user is signed in or not so for that let me make use of the in its state function we can use the current page state variable over here current page is equal to zero and we have to first check whether the user is signed in or not so for that we first check uh, whether it has a current user so it will return some value which can be null or not depending whether there is any user or not so for user so before using that let me just go over here and uh, define an enum so enum is very similar to enumerations in other programming languages it has an index it uh, we can obtain the values that have been defined in this enum by using auth state dot values so the index of this logged in will be 0 and index of this logged out will be 1 so we are we will use this auth state to determine whether the user is signed or not by using a state variable so let us define the state variable over here so or status of status so if uh, after obtaining the current user we will then set state to make changes take effect So if the user ID is not null, then we would set or status as logged in and let us add a user state variable which will contain the details of the user that is that, that is currently logged in so we will state uh, we will use user like this so for import this user file for email i give it user dot email for 
password for i i give it user dot uid but if the user uid comes as null which means there is no user that has logged in so in this case auth status will be auth status dot logged out and initialize user as a empty user okay now next up we need to change uh this thing over here so instead of showing uh the user as guest we will first of all first of all we let me define a pool um it will contain whether it will uh we show whether uh, the user is logged in or not so or status dot logged in move over here so if we try to pass the logged in so if the user is logged in i will instead show the user email and this will show is logged and if the user is logged in i would invoke instead the logout intent so let me define void and uh, logout intent so this say over here okay after reloading let us make changes to the login page so in the login page let us get the auth so go uh, back to main and pass the auth object to login Find the constructor. So 
Okay, so so uh, so now uh, we introduce something about this text form fields. So uh, in a typical login form, you would have some uh, restrictions uh, in uh, what you can type. So in this case of email, we need to make sure that it has the correct correct uh, the for the email the for form of the email address is correct or not. Uh, in the case of password, we can check for whether the password is of some specified length, at least some specified length. Uh, it uh, it can it must contain these uh, alpha unit characters or some special characters or not. Uh, we can do this by using the validator of text form field so it takes it is a function which returns a, a string by taking a string input now as long as, as we can make the login form robust for now we will just check whether the input given is empty or not so if the input is empty we will return the error message which will be displayed in red below the text form field so email cannot be empty uh, and if it is not empty then you will just return none same is the case for this password text field save this now another thing that uh, text form field has is something called on save it is a word function which takes the string input again uh, and it saves the input we will uh, this uh, functionality soon so for now we take this input and we go over here and define some state variables for this login page so we will find a user Okay, so back.
back to our code. So what I've done uh, here is I've included a validator and this will check whether the input is empty uh, or not. If it is empty, it will show us this error. Uh, and then I have included something called on saved. So this will save our, in save our input. We will use the on saved function very soon. So before that, I have defined uh, some state variables for this login page and on saving this we will take the input and put it in the state variable uh, we'll do the same thing over here so being done that let us now go to handle login and use the validation properties uh, we have implemented. So first of all, we will first check for uh, whether the input we have given uh, is correct or not. For that, we can use something called form dot of context dot validate, but uh, as you can kind of figure out from our previous session, we are using the same context that the form is defined in over here. So we cannot use this type of uh, statement. So for that, uh, we can solve uh, this problem using some other ways. Uh, we can use widget refactoring and builder methods, but for now, let us use some other solution. So we define something called a global key of type form state global key of form state so what this global key does actually is uh, uniquely identifies uh, any widget throughout our app so by using this, we can get uh, the state of any widget that we apply this form key to uh, from anywhere in the app without any problems. So let me use this form key over here and make use of that form key. Replace this by form key dot current state. So the current state is uh, the state of the form, which we, uh, which uh, you can figure out is the input that we have given to the form. So if uh, the edit is true, which means uh, there is no error, then we will uh, save the input. So this is where uh, the on save uh, function comes into play. current state so we will first save uh, the input into user password and user email and then we will try to log in using the uh, 5s functions so first of all let me use a bit of error handling because uh, you know it is internet and anything can go wrong so for now we just print the error message and inside this try block we will check whether it is a new user so in this case the user wants to log in uh, sign up in rather 
so we will await for widget dot auth dot sign up email gets the user email password gets user password Okay, so for using this event, we need to go over here and use the sync keyword. Uh, let us just print a statement so that we can be sure that the login functionality is, is uh, working correctly. And then in the else part, we will log in. Widget dot auth dot sign in. Right. So email gets user email, password gets. Use a password. Print that the user has logged in. So after that, after logging in, we need to go uh, go back to the home page, right? So so for that, we use navigator of context dot pop right so let me make sure that everything has been covered okay so let us go back and reload let us try to sign in now password and login looks like it came just give me some error It should be to string, right? Outload again. Second time the charm. Sign was called on now. What? Let me hot restart instead. Looks like I have to build this again. So meanwhile, while it is rebuilding, if uh, if you have any questions, you can ask me now in chat.
It is showing me some something which is not supposed to be, but uh, let's just go with that. We'll I will look into it later, but uh, for now, uh, let us go back to the main dot dot and uh, make the changes that we we the login will make whenever we log in. The user will change, right? So the it will it will have a new user email and a new user ID. So we need to make sure that the main dot dot is updated. Now uh, changing the state from uh, changing the state of a widget from some other widget is never a good idea. But uh, you can uh, kind of do this by defining a function that changes the state. of the same widget and then passing that function to the widget that want, wants to change the state of the widget. So in this case we define something called log uh, login callback and inside we give So whenever a user logs in, we will make these changes in the home page and then we need to pass this function in here. So login call back gets login call back. Find a void callback type function, which is this means that it is a function which returns void. So give it a login callback inside. Login callback. So this and after we sign in invoke widget dot login callback So how to start?
and let us go back implement the logout intent so for that we try Inside, we await for auth dot sign out. Then we set state and make this logged out. Give it async format save hot reload ok so as you can see it has changed now let me also add a navigator Context dot logger uh, pop to close the drawer. So let me try logging in. API keynote valid. Did I make sure to download that file? you know what uh, this is a problem I will look look on it later but let us move on and uh, try to uh, add assets so what I have done here I have gone ahead and added some uh, fonts and some images which uh, we will use in our app so for using this fonts and images go to prospect.yml and it gives us some instructions for using the fonts so I can just go ahead and give it fonts as like that provide the path where the uh, file is located so copy this file name save this uh, this code will automatically pub get and for assets 
that means I am doing this for the images now. So uh, Flutter does not uh, comes up. comes uh, with SVG support out of the box. So for that, we need to include some other package known as Flutter SVG. So it gives us some instructions for installing and using. So let me copy this and put this over here, save it. So it gives us some error that uh, this version of SVG package is uh, cannot be used with our Flutter SDK version that is 1.17. To solve that, uh, we can use any. And it will, uh, pub will fetch the appropriate compatible uh, version of this package to be used with our this version of the Flutter SDK. So after we added that, let us change uh, the text of this hello text over here. So for that, let me go to it. So on page one, that is here. So give it a style. Uh, in the style, give it a font family. Give, we give the name of the font family that we have written in the prospect.yml. Save. So while it is doing that, let me go ahead and add the logo over here. So in the login uh, above the card, we can use SVG image, SVG picture, which imports uh, this package, Flutter SVG, SVG package and use the image as you can see the hello text has been changed to JetBrains Mono let me end up by wrapping this into padding save and we start And we have a uh, image over here. So, as you can see, uh, working with packages and assets is uh, kind of easy. Uh, although we come came across a bit of a problem. So, going back to the slides, uh, we looked at. Uh, Today we looked at how to import packages, uh, bundle custom fonts and images as assets through spec.yml. Use navigator.off to navigate to other pages. We use media query to get the viewport size. Uh, we used in state to initialize the state variables. And then we use global key uh, to obtain the state of the form. And then use some validation in your login form. Uh, and we worked a little bit with uh, list style, card, and single child scroll view, and we saw what they can do. So, this is where you can uh, uh, 
look for packages in the auto flutter uh, it is uh, all the packages are hosted in this website next uh, this website contains all the packages that are uh, five s packages that are come uh, that work with flutter uh, this list all of them as you can see kind of that it has authentication we made a use use of this widget uh, package today and it lists uh, the platform compatibility like mobile web and desktop uh, the setup uh, the instruction setup uh, for uh, integrating fibers to flutter app can be found in this website and as always uh, the code that we worked on will be uh, will be available uh, if not today tomorrow uh, in this repo go ahead and uh, clone or fork this repo and finally if you uh, need the slides they will be available over here so i think uh, we don't have any questions for now uh, but if you do you can hit me up on twitter or linkedin uh, and ask your questions well for now that's it from me well, uh, before i uh, wrap up i have couple of thanks to uh, the outreach team of dsc and ssc and the design team uh, helped us uh, we speakers to coordinate uh, these sessions very smoothly and yeah so thank you